All right. Uh, good. Yeah, afternoon. Uh, we will, a couple programming notes, some counter programming. We will have as our guest Florence Bauer, the UN Population Fund's Regional Director for Eastern Europe and Central Asia. She will join us virtually from Turkey to brief you on her visit to earthquake impacted areas, particularly on the challenge to women and girls. This morning, the Secretary General Special Envoy on Myanmar, Nalene Heiser, briefed the General Assembly. She said that the uh, military takeover in Myanmar, which is now in its third year, has had a devastating impact on the country and its people as violence continues at alarming rate, adding that despite the brutal repression, widespread popular resistance to the military continues by nonviolent and violent means across much of the country. Uh, she will, uh, I will be taking her to the Security Council stakeout so you will know when that happens. Um, U.S. Uh, Undersecretary General Di Carlo, uh, the head of the Political Affairs and Peacebuilding Department, uh, is continuing her visit to Cyprus. She visited the historic city of Famagusta today to learn about the important work on preserving cultural heritage shared by all Cypriots. She expressed confidence that achievements in this area will help build bridges in the future. The Undersecretary General also met with youth representatives, stressing that the voices of young women and men are vital for durable peace solution in Cyprus and elsewhere. She said the, the United Nations would continue our efforts to bring more youth to the table. Um, update for you from uh, Ukraine, where our colleagues inform us that the security situation in the eastern Donetsk region remains perilous due to continuing fighting, leaving frontline communities in dire needs of humanitarian assistance. Over the last day and in the early hours of today, over a dozen civilians were reportedly injured or killed. Multiple residential houses and infrastructure facilities, including a preschool and a school, were damaged in the Ukraine-controlled part of the Donetsk region. That's according to local authorities. In addition, several civilians, including children, were reportedly injured in parts of Donetsk under the military control of the Russian Federation. Uh, that's according to uh, the local authorities uh, there. Residential houses and civilian infrastructure were also reportedly damaged in the neighboring Kharkiv region, according to the local, local authorities and our partners on the ground. Several frontline communities in the region and areas close to the Russian-Ukrainian border continue to be exposed to regular shelling. Today, on the 16th, today, 16th of March, an interagency convoy delivered essential supplies to two communities near the front lines, town of Kupiansk in the, the excuse me, near the front line town of Kupiansk in the Kharkiv uh, region. The assistance was provided by the International Organization for Migration the UNICEF, the UN Refugee Agency, and the World Food Program. Uh, both communities were reportedly, uh, where reportedly 2,700 residents of a pre-war population of about 10,000 remain. They've also, they have suffered damages to houses and infrastructure due to the ongoing hostilities. There is no supply or power, uh, no supply of power or water or access to other essential services is very much limited. Most remaining residents are among the most vulnerable, including older people who cannot be evacuated, and humanitarians have now brought in six trucks of essential aid, including food, clothes, hygiene, solar lamps, heaters, shelter materials to help people meet their basic needs. Since September of this year, of last year, excuse me, the UN has delivered 15 humanitarian convoys to areas that have reverted to Ukrainian control in the Kharkiv area, assisting over 100,000 people. And in Syria, humanitarian workers continue to scale up their response and to deliver aid and pro uh, protection services to people in the areas impacted by the quake. Across Syria, we and our partners have reached more than 1.2 million people with food uh, since the beginning of the earthquake response. More than 50,000 people have received emergency shelter support, while more than 340,000 people have been reached with water, sanitation, and hygiene kits. Our humanitarian colleagues, however, remind us that the number of people in need in Syria is at, was at its highest even before the earthquake struck, with more than 15 million men, women, and children in need of humanitarian aid, and more than 90 percent of people living in poverty. And in earth, excuse me, and the earthquake hit Syria amidst an active cholera epidemic and a water scarcity <laughs> crisis. 
While the 2023 earthquake appeal is currently almost 72 percent funded for Syria, the 2023 humanitarian response plan is just 5 percent funded. This severely limits, severely limits our ability and the ability of our humanitarian partners to deliver to those who need it the most. Update from Cyclone Freddy in southern Africa, where the extent of the hurricane's uh, cyclone's second last landfall is becoming more apparent as access slowly improves. $10 million has just been released from the UN Central Emergency Response Fund to support the response in Mozambique. Our partners continue to work closely with authorities to help some 49,000 displaced people who have sought safety across nearly 140 accommodation centers. In Malawi, the resident coordinator, Rebecca Adadonto, is visiting flood-impacted areas and has called for the international community to step up its solidarity with people who have been impacted by the cyclone. Additional search and rescue capacity <laughs> arrived today with support from the World Food Program. More than 200 people have been rescued so far, and we continue to hear reports of people stranded. Operations have, however, been hampered by difficult weather, and we're facing challenges to deliver supplies. With more than 88,000 people affected by the displaced by the floods across 165 temporary sites, we're working to ramp up assistance to access areas by providing food, tents, blankets, water, and sanitation hygiene supplies. Quick note from our friends at the UN mission in Libya, the support mission, excuse me, they hosted yesterday a meeting in Tunisia, which brought together the 5.5, 5 plus 5 joint military committee and a number of commanders of the military and security units in the west and the east of Libya. They agreed to move forward towards organizing free and fair elections in Libya this year. They also agreed on confidence-building measures to foster national reconciliation, including to continue communications among the leaders of the security and military units for joint security work to ensure the security of the electoral process. Um, Abdullahi Batili, the Secretary General Special Representative, attended the meeting, called on all security and military leaders to support this timely initiative. And uh, turning to Haiti, a group of um, officials from the UN and humanitarian partners just concluded a two-day visit there to access how to assess how humanitarian agencies can expand their operations to respond to the unprecedented humanitarian crisis in the country. The group comprised of officials from, the, from OCHA, UNFPA, UNICEF, UN Women, Concern Worldwide, and World Vision. They met with the Prime Minister and senior government officials, uh, partners, diplomats, and people impacted by the crisis, as well as community representatives in areas controlled or under the influence of criminal gangs. The team noted uh, that there's been progress in the response, including through the work of local NGOs. A rookie mistake there. They also uh, said that the government health partners deserve recognition uh, for their efforts to control the cholera outbreak. However, people's access to basic services in Haiti is still severely limited in areas controlled or under the influence of gangs. We, along with our partners, continue to engage with communities to reach people and to reach people in hard to reach areas. Uh, between October and January of this year, 97 emergency missions were conducted. The 2023 humanitarian appeal, appeal for Haiti, excuse me, 2023, 2023 Haiti appeal calling for nearly $715 million to help more than 3 million will be launched next month. Officials stress that the humanitarian operations alone cannot address the underlying causes of Haiti's security, political, and development crisis. Several of the officials will be uh, here as my guest tomorrow. A uh, quick note from the UN Office of Drugs and Crime. Today released their first ever global report on cocaine. The report shows that the global supply of cocaine has reached record levels, with coca cultivation soaring 35% from 2020 to 2021. Demand for cocaine has also swelled, many regions showing a steady rise in cocaine users. The report warns that while the cocaine market remains quite concentrated in the Americas and parts of Europe, there's strong potential for expansion in Africa and Asia. The UN Office for Drugs and Crime notes that cocaine trafficking is also diversifying with new hubs, routes and groups and modalities. Countries in southeastern Europe and Africa, for example, particularly those in West and Central Asia are increasingly being used as key transit zones for the drug. 
I uh, want to flag that this afternoon the Secretary General will announce members of his next Youth Climate Advisory Group. It's a group of seven young climate leaders from all regions of the world and a wide diversity of experience, backgrounds, and areas of climate expertise. They were shortlisted and selected from a large pool of candidates nominated by respected youth climate organizations from all regions, following the same procedure uh, used for the selection of the inaugural Youth Advisory Group, which just completed its two-year term. Members of the group will work with youth climate movements and leaders around the world to bring youth perspectives and solutions directly to the Secretary General and to major climate moments and decision-making fora. More online. Um, senior personnel announcement. Today, uh, Secretary General is appointing Major General Mohammed Farkul Hassan of Bangladesh as force commander for the UN mission for the referendum in Western Sahara, otherwise known as MINURSO. He will succeed Major General Zia-ur-Rahman of Pakistan, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for his exemplary service and leadership of MINURSO. Major General Hassan has over 34 years of national and international military leadership experience, both with the Bangladeshi Army, and has served two tours of duties in peacekeeping missions in Somalia and the DRC. Lastly, we thank um, our friends in two countries that have amazing coastlines, amazing islands, and where I would be happy to be on vacation in either of those countries. They're in southeastern Europe. Yes? Croatia. Yes. Okay. Yes, you do. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Steph. On the grain deal, mm -hmm. um, if Russia insists on a 60-day extension, will the UN take it? It's, it let me s s be clear. It's not for Secretary General to take or leave anything. There are three parties to this uh, agreement, uh, the Russian Federation, Ukraine, and Turkey. Secretary General signed on as a witness. The agreement... Uh, is public, it's an open document, um, and uh, it foresees a rollover of 120 days. So that's, that's my answer to your question. It's not for us to, to take or leave uh, offers from, from the parties. James and then Linda. Yeah. So I've got a follow-up and then I've got something else. Um, on the follow-up, um, the Russian Foreign Ministry spokesman, Maria Zakharova, who you know, um, she's very firm in what she's saying to reporters in Moscow. The deal is being extended for 60 days. And then reporters read her your comments and asked her why there was a difference. And she said that may be a display of the UN's incompetence. Your reaction? The only thing I'm saying is I'm reiterating and reading something that is in a public document. Russia is a party to this deal. Ukraine is a party to this deal. Turkey is a party to this deal. There are discussions ongoing. I was just stating and, and reading basically a, a line from the agreement, which talks about the, the, the fact the agreement foresees a renewal for 120 days. And if Russia does not want 120 days, it must formally object, yes? I, you and I work, are working off the same knowledge, which is a publicly available agreement. So I will leave you uh, to answer your own question. Okay. Uh, one more on Afghanistan. The Security Council has now uh, mandated the Secretary General to set up a panel of experts to look at the situation in Afghanistan. Um, one. Is the Secretary General disappointed because clearly the Security Council wants to go beyond the advice it's getting from the Secretariat? It needs other advice here. It's, it's asking for more fresh ideas from others. Also, was the Secretary General given advance warning of this? How close is he to appointing and having uh, this panel in place because they're supposed to report in November? We will appoint a panel as quickly as, uh, as possible. Uh, I mean, I try not to say something pithy. The Secretary General will abide uh, by the mandate given to him by the Security Council, and I've no doubt uh, that people in his office were aware of the ongoing discussions. Linda, and then Deji, and Alex. 
Thank you, staff. Going back to Thank the you. war in Ukraine, um, you mentioned that the frontline communities, both those controlled by Ukraine mm -hmm. and those controlled by Russia, um, you know, near the uh, Donetsk region, have suffered uh, attacks, casualties. And I was wondering if you have any details in terms of the kinds of casualties, the numbers, and that kind of thing. Uh, nothing to share with you at this uh, point. Our human rights colleagues regularly report on, on, on casualties and, and so forth. So as soon as they have a new report, we will share that uh, with you. Deji. Sorry, I have to drag you back to the Black Sea Grain Initiative. Our report in Moscow also said that the Foreign Ministry of Russia reaffirmed that the Black Sea Grain Initiative will extend for 60 days. Has it been you know, confirmed, or it's just from the Russian? Uh, I will, not surprisingly, resist being dragged so, back so, in this so discussion. I, I'm just, uh, I'm being asked let, a let question. Me, no, 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 let, 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 me, let, me, let, let me try, and then you can have a, a retry. Um, I'm stating what the agreement says, right? Mm -hmm. There are three parties to this agreement. They're all expressing their, uh, their positions. Um, discussions are ongoing, and I'm going to leave it at that. So, uh, let like just 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 asked uh, if Russian insists on this sixty days period of time, and UN is the witness of this deal, right? So will the Secretary General help to persuade other parties to to go with sixty days? The, the, Would that be the discussion the, you mentioned? The 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 Secretary General's focus is on ensuring the continuity and the integrity of an agreement that is critical to global food security, while at the same time continuing our uh, efforts and very focused efforts on the Memorandum of Understanding, which uh, looks at the facilitation of trade of Russian food and fertilizer, which, as we've said, has faced, uh, while they, those two uh, things are not under sanction, they have faced, uh, they have faced obstacles, and we're working hard to remove those obstacles. Uh, back, to the, back to the text you always said. This is what the text on the Black Sea Grain Initiative said. Quote, this initiative will remain in effect for 120 days from the date of signature by all parties and can be extended automatically for the same period unless one of the parties notifies that the others of the intent to terminate the initiative or to modify it. So far, when we talk a lot about this extension or continuity of, of the Black Sea Green Initiative, has UN received any official letters to ask for terminate or, or modify this? I'm not gonna go into those details at this point. Yes, sir, and then we'll go. Yep. Uh, the UN Independent International Commission of Inquiry into Violation in Ukraine has identified individuals who may be represent, uh, responsible for, for the crimes committed during the Russian aggression in Ukraine. And the list will be submitted to the competent UN bodies. This was stated by the chairman of the commission, Eric Mercer, during press conference in Geneva on Thursday. Do you have any comment on that? I mean, my, my only comment is to A, stress that this is an independent commission st set up by the, the Human Rights Council, over which Secretary General has no authority. What he has said uh, many times in relations to uh, the many victims of this conflict is that they deserve and they are owed effective accountability. Let's stay in the Mediterranean, but let's go a little further east. Thank you, sir. Stefan, uh, a little closer, microphone a little closer, please. Oh, okay. Thank Do you. you see any possibility for a new initiative uh, by the Secretary General on uh, Cyprus? And also, I have another question. Can you confirm that the Secretary General is thinking after the trip of uh, Mrs. Di Carlo to ask the President of Cyprus and Mr. Talat to come to New York? I think what is important for the Secretary General is to hear back 
uh, directly and personally from Rosemary DiCarlo when she returns to New York, and then we'll see what next steps are taken. Yeah. So tomorrow, uh, the Security Council will have uh, an ARIA for formula meeting on the hu human rights situation in DPLK. And uh, do you have any update on the possible return of uh, international aid workers to that country? Thanks. No. Uh, there's no, there's no update. Morat? Thanks. Thank you. Uh, on Libya, according to the International Atomic Energy uh, Agency, uh, there is approximately 2.5 uh, of natural uranium is missing from a site in Libya that's not under control of the government. Are you aware of this? Do you have any... Uh, I mean, we're, we're aware of it through uh, the press reports. We've seen the IEA statement. It's obviously a troubling uh, development. Um, to say the least, uh, and but the IEA is in the lead on this uh, on this issue. There are reports, there are reports, uh, reports saying that the uh, national uh, uh, Lib Libyan national army found these materials. Can you confirm that? No, I am not. I don't have the information to uh, to do that. Let me finish with the first uh, round, Gregory. Uh, thank you, Stefan. Uh, today, Poland uh, filed an application uh, to deprive for Russia of uh, the rights and privileges in IAEA, uh, but at the same time, uh, uh, we were saving the obligations of the Russian Federation. Uh, so, how, c how can this kind of initiatives can affect uh, on the cooperations with Russia uh, on the, on the current uh, very urgent issues on the IAEA agenda, thank you. Uh, a couple of things. One, obviously, the I, it's on the IAEA's. It's the IAEA's uh, member states that will decide and board of governors how the IAEA is run. So it's not for me to comment. I would remind you of what we've said in the past, uh, and that is the Secretary General's, um, you know, worry in a sense uh, about uh, the expulsion or the removal of uh, member states uh, from multilateral bodies within the UN system. Um, I'm going to go to the screen, uh, Abdel Hamid, and then Pam. Abdel Hamid? Oh, we can't hear you. You cannot now? Uh, uh, now I can, now I can. Okay. Four Palestinians were killed in Jenin today, uh, Stefan. Uh, first, do you have any statement on that or any comment? Well, I think this is yet another example of the alarming cycle of violence uh, that we're seeing. Um, violence that in which very often civilians, including uh, children, are often uh, victims. And yet another reason uh, for the international community to redouble its efforts uh, to find an end to this cycle of violence. Yeah, I have more questions, if you don't mind. Please. Yeah. In his meeting with the Islamic Waqf Council in Jerusalem, Mr. Winsland said, all must refrain from pro provocations that may escalate tensions. What does the Waqf Council do that could be considered a uh, provocation? What does the, Pal the Palestinians do that could be uh, provocations? And there could be all, he is calling all uh, to uh, end any uh, provocations. Who's doing the provocation? Well, the Listen, the, this has been our, our, standard, uh, our standard position. As for the details of exactly what uh, Mr. Venislan said, what he meant, and, and so on, I would ask you to reach out to his office uh, directly. Uh, My last question, yes, if you don't mind. There was an explosion in the city of Megiddo in Israel. Israel says that somebody came from South Lebanon. Does UNIFIL have anything to say about it? Do they eyewitness or trace any infiltration of the border from South Liban? But no, I have not seen anything from, um, uh, from UNIFIL on, on that. We can ask them, uh, but I haven't seen anything. Pamela. Thanks, Seth. 
Uh, could you go through a little bit of the of the procedure on the Black Sea Initiative? What happens Saturday uh, if the modification that Russia is proposing isn't accepted? Um, it does do the boat stop moving, and um, do all four have to agree to it? And is there a discussion on the ninety days? And then I have one. Totally separate question. Uh, asking for your indulgence, Pam, I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to predict what's going to happen. Uh, the procedures uh, for the renewal, foreseeing the, the renewal of the, uh, of the uh, initiative is in black and white in the, in the agreement. And, you know, you refer to the four. I would remind you that there are three member states that have their obligations uh, and their responsibilities under the agreement, and we are uh, the witness. Um, so I will leave it at that. But it does um, expire if no, if there's no agreement, correct? I, I would encourage, I mean, we can ask Deji to read the, uh, the, the, the parts of the agreement again, uh, but I, uh, I would just ask you to read the, the agreement. Uh, okay, second totally separate question is just, can you comment on the two and a half uh, tons of uranium missing from the Libyan site that the IAEA has revealed? Again, with your indulgence, I, Murad asked that question about five minutes ago, uh, so yeah, I've, I, I've already answered. I've already yeah. Okay, James. Um, I'm going to slightly re-ask that question because the Which IAEA, the, the, yeah, the, yeah. the uranium question, the IAEA does not have the footprint on right. the ground that you have. Um, so could you plan find out yep. from the mission yep. what they are doing? If there's missing uranium floating around Libya, one would have thought that UN, who have people on the ground, might be able to help look for it, particularly, particularly if it's in the hands of Haftar's yep. militia. Um, moving back to Libya for, an, for, for, for another question, um, just trying to work out what this new announcement you've made of this high-level panel or the SRSG has made his plans for this high-level panel, how that's going to change things. Because at the moment, you've got the High Council of State in Tripoli and you've got the House of Representatives in the East. Both say they've got constitutional power. Both won't agree to come to some consensus on elections. How does creating a new body that doesn't have any constitutional basis with anyone, how does that help? It, well, frankly, everything that's been done to date... Uh well, even some, many agreements that have been agreed to, the parties have not lived up to. So we are just uh, trying to create frameworks that we hope will move things in the right direction. Two others from different parts of the world. Um, Uganda, uh, there is a um, uh, lawmakers there um, are preparing to vote on anti-LGBT uh, legislation. Uganda's president, uh, Yuwari Museveni, has said, or said today, that gay people are deviants, and he's called for an investigation into homosexuality in the country. What's the UN's reaction to that? Uh, I haven't particularly seen those, those remarks. Our position uh, everywhere remains the same, that no one should ever be prosecuted, targeted, or, uh, or harassed just because of who they are and, and, and who they love. And members of the LGBTQI plus community have the same human rights and the right to dignity than, than, than everybody else has. So would the Secretary General consider uh, remarks like that from a head of state as reprehensible? I think the Secretary General's position is, uh, I think, the opposite of the one you expressed. I mean, you expressed that you, you related to me. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, and then finally, um, we didn't ask you about this last week. The news emerged in Afghanistan, from Afghanistan um, of one of those that died as a migrant at sea was actually a former journalist in Afghanistan who was a former UNAMA employee. Does this not say something about the UN and its attitude to its staff? Sorry, say again? Uh, so, so there was a, a lady, I don't have the name to hand, I can give it to you in a second if you want, um, um, who drowned at sea, uh -huh. having f fled Afghanistan. She was a former journalist and a former worker for mm -hmm. UNAMA. Doesn't it say something about the United Nations that at various points you evacuated your international staff from Afghanistan, that people who've worked for you, for you, the UN in the past in Kabul and elsewhere in Afghanistan, are having to flee on boats and are dying because you haven't offered them the same protection? Well, Alyssa, I don't... Uh, I, 
every uh, death uh, of a migrant or of a refugee is a tragedy. And I'm not going to comment on it without knowing exactly what the particular circumstances of, um, of this person that drove, drove them to, uh, to flee under extremely, extremely dangerous uh, circumstances. Deji. And then we'll um, go to our guest. One quick question, because I just want to ask, and you, you, you just caught someone else, so I, I didn't ask this. Uh, you, you just mentioned this year's uh, Global Cocaine Report 2023, yeah. right? I, I just want to know the position of the use of cannabis and marijuana from the United Nations. That's all. Uh, I will get that. I don't know it off the top of my head, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I will, I will go grab a gummy and then answer your question. Um, <laughs> sorry, Florencia. Um, and we will move to our guest from uh, Turkey and uh, just watch your emails uh, about Myanmar. 